Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. I'd like to tell you a little story about the weirdest antenna that I ever had by all uh, theoretical purposes, by all theoretical assumptions, it just shouldn't have gotten out at all. It should have been the worst possible, I mean, as bad as you could get without just running a piece of coaxial cable out the window and putting nothing on the end of it. I mean, it just a horrible, theoretically horrible antenna, and yet I made all kinds of contacts with it, and to this day I'll never know why. That was way back when I was uh, about 17 years old, maybe 16 years old, just gotten my general class license living in Rochester, Minnesota, and operating under the call sign WA0OKV, Whiskey Alpha Zero, Oscar Kilo Victor. And uh, my parents were pretty tolerant when it came to my antenna stringings. Uh, adorning the house, but only to a certain point. Uh, but it, apparently this did not exceed that point. If they'd have realized what a rotten antenna it really was, well, let's forget about that. I ran RG8U coaxial cable out of the fallout shelter in our basement. That's the bomb shelter that we had, uh, that everybody built in those days following the Cuban Missile Crisis and uh, ran it out the house probably a hundred feet uh, up to, uh, to the roof and then up a 20-foot guy-wired uh, television mast for supporting television antennas. But at the top of that antenna, I ran, I uh, connected the uh, shield of the coax to the mast. Uh, no particular radial system, no nothing like that. And the center conductor to four eight-foot aluminum uh, tubing sections. Each one eight feet long, four of them. One of them going straight up, one of them going more or less west, one going north, one going east, and one going south. So it looked kind of like a Kind of, you, you might think it was a 10 meter ground plane antenna if you didn't know what it really was. It was nothing more than those four eight foot sections all connected to the center conductor of the coax and uh, the shield of the coax just going to the mast. There were no radials at all. There, were, there was nothing to balance out the RF that might get into those eight foot sections. And they were all just tied together uh, or connected together, and I uh, held them in place with pieces of nylon rope connected with hose clamps and electrical tape so that I had uh, sort of like uh, what looked like a ground plane antenna for 10 meters, but it wasn't. And I used it on all bands, 80 through 10 meters. I mean, the thing was just a a little bit of aluminum tubing connected to the end of a piece of coax and thinking that I was going to be able to make contacts and thinking that the antenna was actually going to get out on the air and, may, and, and work. I ran my Drake R4A and T4X with about 200 watts plate power input on CW, of course, probably about 100 watts RF output going into that RG8U coax. And uh, the thing, I made some contacts with it. And then one day I got the idea, why don't I try this thing on 160 meters? Forget about the transmatch uh, at the transmitter end of the antenna. It was a Johnson Viking matchbox that worked 80 through 10. So at least I could get a, an SWR of one to one at the transmitter output. The transmitter didn't know the difference between that and a dummy load or that and a perfectly tuned uh, antenna of massive dimensions. It just knew it got it what it's wanted to stick its RF into and so it stuck it into it. Well, there was no transmatch uh, operation on 160 with the Johnson Viking matchbox. So I just connected that antenna straight to the T4 
T4X output with a PL259 connector. And I don't know what the SWR was, and I didn't care. I just wanted to see what would happen because the, that radio uh, set, the R4A and the T4X, had 160 meter coverage, and I wanted to see, gee, you know, I wonder if this thing would get out on 160. So in the, on a few winter nights, I got on 160 with the usual 100 watts RF output into this thing, which was more or less a uh, eight foot unbalanced antenna with no radials or anything to balance it. It was like a vertical up in the air without radials, but it had four. I called it, and uh, maybe I told you this already, <clears throat> the vertizontal antenna. And wouldn't you know, I made all kinds of contacts all over the U.S. With, on 160 with that thing. It worked great. It was probably the best 160 meter antenna I've ever had, short of a kite or balloon supported half wave 160 meter wire. But that's another story for another video. I think it's about time for me to shut up. You run out of patience. But it was, it, antennas can be so weird. You never know whether it's going to work or not until you connect it up and use it. That's all I can say. I just couldn't, <clears throat> to this day, I can't believe that it actually worked so well, but it did. The Verdizontal. Stan Gibalisco signing off. Now, I'm not recommending you try this, by the way. 73 and so long, which, regardless of antenna type, in my native fist always translates to Da-da-da-da-da-da. Da, 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 da.